let's talk about Rick Beato's video from a couple days ago. Top 20 one hit wonders of the 2000s. And I got to say, Rick, if you happen to be watching this, would you consider adopting me as your son? Because uh, Rick Beato is goals. Obviously, him and I uh, may have different taste. He tends to be into more, I guess we would call like old school rock. And me, you guys know I'm I'm a Zoomer. I'm a proud member of Generation Z. Yes, I was born in 1978, but, you know, I feel like I'm just on the cusp of Gen Z, despite being born in 1978. That said, I think Rick uh, makes awesome videos, and uh, shout out to him. I mean, look, 3.3 million subscribers. The guy is killing it. Shout out to Rick. I will say this. Of all the people out there, such as myself who, uh, you know, throw their opinions out there about music onto the internet. I would say Rick knows more theory than pretty much all of us. He understands music um, at a very fundamental level that very few of us do. Uh, and I respect his opinions a lot for that reason. So let's check out what he has chosen as the top 20 one hit wonders of the 2000s. Really quick, before we go any further, have you checked out my Patreon? Patrons get early access to all my main channel videos and my podcasts. I also do giveaways sometimes. For example, I just gave away a pair of these Eargasm earplugs. And if you want me to review your music, there's a way to do that as well. All you gotta do is join at the $10 and up level, then every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review something, all you gotta do is drop it in the comments of that post then I will review it live on Twitch and post it on Patreon for everyone to see. So if that sounds cool, hit the link in the description of this video and I appreciate your support. We're going to count down the top 20. And he just seems like such a nice guy. The 2000s, which I wish I was as nice as Rick Beata, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm a jerk. I'm a butthole. And I'm the internet's biggest metal elitist. I've changed my life though. I want to be nice. Like Rick Beato. I want to be nice like Rick. Rick, teach me how to be nice. It's been a pretty popular series here. I've already done the 70s. I've done the 80s. I've done the 90s. I was going to do the 60s, but I thought let's do the 2000s because there's a lot of one hit wonders in a lot of different genres in the early no, 2000s. No, being nice is not underrated. This was actually a be tricky nice list. Is great. A Coming in at number 20. Okay. Number 20. This, song. this was a huge hit. Oh, Lips of an Angel by Hinder. How can you talk about this song? without showing the scarves and the, the rings and his weird ass hand movements. You gotta watch the video to really do this song justice. There it is. It's a great song, great hook. Corny as shit, pure butt rock. Now that's what I call butt rock. But we gotta admit, it is an extremely catchy song. Yes, this is County Fair Rock, 100% County Fair Rock. Okay, that's Lips of an Angel by Hinder. It may sound like Nickelback because it does sound like Nickelback. Yeah, it does. Song number 19 was released okay. in 2004. This is a band, I believe, from Texas. Check it out. Oh, 19, 1985 by Bowling for Soup. Yeah, Bowling for Soup is a great band. I don't know who writes their songs. I don't know if it's uh, Jarrett, the singer. I'm not sure if he writes them. Whoever writes these songs is a an extremely fucking good songwriter. Like, this was the song that got them popular, but every song in this album is fucking great. This is like top, 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 top tier, like pop punk songwriting. In all seriousness, they're like a silly band, but this the songwriting on this album is top fucking notch. No, it's not a cover. Is it? No, it's not a cover. Mitch Allen wrote this song. He did. Mitch Allen from SR71. That's right. But uh, the songwriting of this whole album is fucking fantastic, though. What's the one about uh, their hometown? This song goes out to all the people who were nice to me, even though I was the fat kid and the marching band geek. You guys didn't think that I knew Bowling for Soup lyrics, but I do. That's how much I like this album. It's great. 19, 19. I listened to the shit out of that album. This song was actually recorded here in Atlanta at Tree Studios. Okay. And it was produced by my friend Nick Dedia. I remember actually when they were recording it at the studio because I used to work out of there. Okay. I have no idea what this is. Do you guys know absolutely Story of a Girl by Nine Days? I don't think I know this one. This is the story of a girl. Oh, wait. No, I do know this. Oh, I hate this song. When she smiles. 
I've got the tambourine. I hate that fucking song. It is objectively a good song. Uh, One Tree Hill vibes. That's true. That's true. Uh, I like it. If it's the soundtrack to a very Christian teen drama show, I would like it in that context. Song number 17 was released in 2009 by this British act. It's a great song. Let's listen to it. Never heard this. I don't know this one. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. Oh, this is this is bad. That's a really good hook. Um, this sounds way worse than I remembered. This is definitely mall music, yes. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. This is the music that plays at Zara or H&M while you sit on your phone waiting for your wife to try on five different sweaters that all look the same. This is the song that would be playing. Song number 16 is by this British group. I was a big fan of them, and it's amazing they only had this one really big hit even though they had some kind of hey. for, you know for people like me it? that liked the band they had some other hits but yeah this you realize you know all the songs once the chorus hits a catchy chorus is so powerful that's 100 percent right man hooks are everything i know the metal people don't want to hear it but it's true vocal hooks in the chorus it's everything this was really their only big hit You're so, you've been waiting in the sun too i don't know this one but it's terrible. Song number 15 is this band's only really big hit, but it was a great cover of a Michael Jackson song. Alien Ant Farm. It is a great cover. I just feel bad for them because they're actually a really good band, and it's unfortunate that people only know this song because this whole album is great, really good songwriting, great musicians. This bass player is awesome. So is the drummer. Very, like, good, progressive kind of band. Very underrated. It's a shame that people only know this song because they're great. I like movies better. Yeah, movies is my favorite. Love that snare, that cranked mid-2000s or early 2000s snare. Song number 14 was released in 2006. It's a very cool song. Oh yeah, this is a great song. Uh, you guys know my feelings about Girls With Bangs, and this is definitely music for indie girls with bangs that shopped at Urban Outfitters and American Apparel back then. No question about that, but it is objectively a great song. I love this song. I hate indie thing. I hate anything artsy or indie, and yet I love this song anyway. Song number 13 was really a pop punk anthem at the time. It's I'm sorry, Kimmy, I had to. One hit wonder pop punk songs. Check it out. Mm. Oh, okay. I mean, it's barely even pop punk, really. It's more just like rock. It's more like Weezer or Fountains of Wayne. I would call it like power pop. Not pop punk, really, which doesn't really matter. Whatever. Genre labels don't matter. It is a great song. I gotta say, though, sounds much worse than I remember. It's actually, it's kind of rough. I remembered it being much more, like, polished and slick. And actually sounds kind of like, it's a really catchy vocal hook. But the it actually sounds kind of bad. Coming in at number 12, this okay. song was nominated in 2006 for Song of the Year, and it's a great song. Check it out. Don't you hesitate, go put your records on. I don't think I know this one. I'm offended by her posture. Really? Nobody told her, like, girl, sit up straight, shoulders back, head up, come on. Smiles up, attitudes up, energy up, shoulders back. Come on, Corn Bailey Ray. Fix that posture. This is very uh, Macy's core. Very Macy's music. Not bad. Coming in at number 11, this band actually was doing a showcase in Orlando, Florida on the same night my band was doing a showcase mm. in 1999. Well, they actually got a record deal from it. Oh, God. I fucking hate this song. Their original name was like Flying Butt Monkeys or something, right? Wasn't the original name of the band something just absolutely shockingly horrible? I think it literally was like Flying Butt Monkeys. I hate this song. I always thought this was Franz Ferdinand. For, until like a year ago, I thought this was by Franz Ferdinand. Rainbow Butt Monkeys, that's what it was. Rainbow Butt Monkeys, that was their name. I hate this song so much. 
Okay, now we're down to the top 10. Coming in at number 10, this song ten, has a 10. great piano riff, but the chorus is not obvious. It's kind of all a all a hook because of the great piano part. Mm. When oh, yeah. By, you know what a great song. I love this song. Even Rick can't resist playing air drums. I love this song, and uh, whenever this song comes on, the first thing that comes to mind to me is like, imagine being in like sixth grade um, youth group. You have a crush on Cody from uh, down the street in your neighborhood, and you guys end up going to the same youth group in sixth grade, and you hold hands with him for the first time uh, while well, this song is playing. That's what this makes me think of. Told you about Cody and confidence. Song number love nine. Love it. Not ironically, love it. Whose bass player I actually knew from New York years ago. He passed away in 2020, but this band, Fountains of Wayne, was a great oh, yes. band. So, man, I talked about some of these like one hit wonders in a different video. So many of these people died. It's really sad. Um, it's almost like um, being a one hit wonder, you know, it's, it's a death sentence. It's sad. Great song. No, he died of COVID, I think. Great song. Fun fact for anybody who doesn't know, I found out that the name of this band is based on an actual store called Fountains of Wayne in Wayne, New Jersey. I used to live in Montclair, New Jersey, and Fountains of Wayne is a store that was down the street from us. And I said, oh, that must be what the band is named after. Cool. It's a great song. Incredible hook. Song number eight was released in 2004. It was a huge hit back then. I remember seeing the band play here in Atlanta just before that, and they were great live. Here it is. See, you can see why I thought that Finger Eleven and Franz Ferdinand were the same band, right? I mean, basically the same band, except Franz Ferdinand is, uh, I I've always found them to be kind of irritating, but man, Finger Eleven is just like nails on a fucking chalkboard. This song is like kind of, overdone but they're legit they're you know they're objectively a good band yeah it's butt rock franz ferdinand it's unbearable this reminds me of like those uh apple commercials the ipod commercials that the the people dancing with the silhouettes you remember those if this wasn't in one of those commercials i feel like it should have been it's very like ipod commercial core Song number seven barely made the list. It was released in 2000, but you will definitely know it from the keyboard riff. Oh yeah, okay, this one. I had no idea who this was by. Are any of you familiar with the uh, the actress named Electra Blue by any chance? You put these two together and they kind of look like Electra Blue. She's done a lot of work. You may, you may have seen her in some internet films. Coming Rick, in at number six, this song out. was a big hit of the new metal era, and it's a great okay. song, and it's mixed this gonna be incredibly trapped? well. Sounds huge. Let's check it out. Yes, I knew it. How did I know this is going to be trapped? Back off, I'll take you on. Back off. Uh, his vocals are a lot worse than I remembered. Mr. Trapped, who you guys remember in 2020, he had a, a meltdown and like, threatened Ezek from Scarhead and Crown of Thorns on Twitter. <laughs> and Ezek was just like, don't do this, bro. Look me up. Don't do this. I, know that you are headstrong. Headstrong. I feel like I have to join the army. After listening to this song, I feel like I have to go down to my recruiters, my local army uh, recruiter's office and sign up. What's he up to now? Is Mr. Trap still like threatening very dangerous people? on the internet. I'm surprised Rick likes this so much. Like that's a catchy little hook, but I don't think this is a great song. I mean, it's it's catchy, whatever, but I'm surprised he likes it this much because it's not it's not great. There's definitely much better new metals. Like I would say Click Click Boom is a better song than this. I'm surprised he likes it so much. Okay, now we're down to the top five. Honestly, okay, top I five. would say this, but really any of these songs could be in any order. This particular song was a huge top 40 hit at the time period and uh, still gets played a lot to this day. Oh, this is a great song. A uh, very irritating song that I'm very tired of hearing. You guys know my favorite part of revisiting the 2000s is the fashion. These like boot cut seven jeans. 
uh, with his, what the, I don't know what you call those, those hats that were almost like a beanie with a brim, like Bam Margera used to wear all the time. Everybody in every hardcore band looked like this in 2004, and I, I miss it. I want to bring it back. It is a catchy song. I like all the air drumming from Rick in this video. Daniel Powder gives Rick the stank face. I like it. See, I can do it too. If I rock out to Daniel Powder, will I, will I also get 3 million subscribers? Is this what I've been doing wrong? See, I'm learning so much from Rick. I see Rick is such a likable, nice guy. You know, you just, you want to be friends with them, right? Whereas me, people don't like me so much. People, people don't like me. And I'm trying, I want to be likable like Rick. So maybe this is what I need to do. Maybe I need to, you know, stank face to Daniel Powder. Maybe that's how you get people to like you. I don't know. I'm only half joking here. Rick, tell me what I can do to make people like me more. That's what I want to know. Coming in at number four, this song has a great little guitar riff that happens in the verse and has a huge chorus. It's another big hit of the new metal era. Oh, this is a great song. I feel like every time I air drum, I'm going to get 100,000 more subscribers. It worked for Rick. It can work for me. I legitimately love this song. Coming in at number three, this song, a lot of you might say, well, this isn't a one hit wonder, but this song is way bigger than okay. any of their other Let's songs. See. This is one of the best produced songs. That's a killer vocal sound. Great song. Listen. Oh. Uh, I agree with him on that. This is a great fucking vocal sound. Very distorted and very present. Like this whole song is very raw and lo-fi, um, but those vocals are very upfront almost like a pop song, but really distorted, you know, in a sort of garage rock kind of way. It is legitimately great production. That's a great observation on his part. I hate the song, by the way. I fucking hate this song, and I hate this band, and I hate garage rock. <laughs> but it is legitimately a great mix. So sweet with the this was definitely an, an iPod commercial. I remember that. This is like a uh, commercial for back to school at Ross. This fall, get your best back to school looks at Ross. And then they play this song with like some aspiring child actor, like trying on a coat. Coming in at number two, this song was a big, I guess you'd say Neo Soul tune. Uh, okay. Came out in 2006. This Neo is a soul. killer song. D'Angelo maybe? Okay. No, no, yeah, yeah. I hate this song, but also, it is legitimately great, but I hate this song. Great vocal, no question about that. Okay, we're now down to the okay, top. The number one, one hit wonder of the 2000s. What's it gonna be? Everybody at home, I need you to make a stank face and air drum along with me and Rick. Rick and I are gonna be air drumming to this, whatever it is. I need you guys to do the same. This song it is- It better be saliva, better be click, click, boom. It's better be saliva. Give me, give me saliva. Give me saliva. Please, please, Rick, give me some saliva. Give me the click, click, boom. Actually, the most stripped down song of any mm. of these. This is one of the most simple songs that you'll ever hear. Emo Girl by MGK. It's really amazing that in this form, it became a huge hit and still gets played to this day. This is this band's really only really big song, okay. but you'll know it. Oh, yeah, all right. Oh, you do to me. Um, Plain White Tees, Hey There Delilah. Fun fact is that uh, Brett Mazur from Crazy Town, also known as Epic from Crazy Town, worked with this band. He's a very accomplished producer, actually. And I don't know, I don't think he worked on this song, but uh, he did produce Plain White Tees. So uh, any band that can somehow be connected to Crazy Town is okay in my book. Oh, what you do to me. This is a great song. I don't like it, but it is objectively a great song. So that's my list. Let me know what you there think. There it is. If okay. I... Those are the top 20 one hit wonders of the 2000s. According to your man, Rick Beato, I hope that I did enough stank facing and air drumming to become as likable as Rick in this video, because really that is my only goal in this world. I'm torn. There's an angel and a devil on my shoulder. On one hand, the devil is telling me, Finn, you're entering your metal elitist arc. Just go with it. Go with it. Be the internet's biggest metal elitist. You've earned this. You deserve this. And I say, well, it's true. I do deserve it. I've been listening to death metal for over 30 years. I deserve 
to lord that over everybody and treat them like crap and act like I'm better than them because I have been listening to Morbid Angel for 30 years. You're right. But then on the other hand, I've got the angel on my shoulder says, wait a minute. What about Rick Beato? What about Nick Nocturnal? Why don't, why aren't you as nice as they are? Why don't people like you as much as them? And I'm torn. I don't know. Should I listen to the angel or the devil? I don't know. I'm torn. I can't make up my mind. All I know is that these are the top 21 hit wonders of the 2000s, courtesy of Rick Beato. And uh, respect to Rick. I hope one day to even have a fraction of his success. That's what I think.